Happy Friday, everyone. I hope you guys are having an amazing day, an amazing week. I am RK with Sacred Para Playland, and this is our podcast, Adult Play Therapy, where our model is anyone can play right. And that's play right as if you're writing. <laughs> Hi, Coach Play with an I. That's my husband. And as many of you guys know, he is a personal trainer, fitness instructor, nutritionist, and he has a grand opening in October. We have a grand opening in October with our gym where we're going to be able to host people in person for any of their fitness goals, as well as if you need to do a virtual one-on-one, -on -one, contact him. Hi, Davenport's underscore family. Hi, Maggie May. Hi, hi. Well, you guys today is amazing because I'm going to be able to chat to the one and only Maggie May. Ha ha. As many of you have already logged onto her page and possibly be following her account right now, you will be able to see that she has amazing skit comedy that she does in person as well as with her dolls. So I am very much looking forward to conversating with her today as a former comedian myself. And my husband, yes, we've worn a lot of different hats in our lifetime. <laughs> We're not like really, really old, but nonetheless, we've worn a lot of hats. And one of those hats was a stand-up comedian. So, and honestly, the bug never does leave you. As I'm certain that you guys will hear from Maggie when we talk. So, guys, buckle your seatbelts. You are dialing her in right now. Let's see, I heard it ring. Did you guys hear it ring? I heard it ring. Let's try it again. Hey, how are you? Hey, you caught me just as everything fell. That's okay. It happened. It happened. <laughs> Yo, hold on. All right. All right. We're good. We're good. It's good. Everything's good. It's, good. it's, good. Hey, it's so good to see your face. You too. Hold on. Let me get the no grease off my phone. There we go. <laughs> I promise I'm ready. I did, I did the same thing before forehead you know trying to wipe off both cameras make sure that everything's crystal clear mm -hmm. so it is so good to see how's your day going not bad actually it's been really busy it's kind of been a game of inches but i've been winning so there you go good. there you go claim the win claim the win that's where yes. i'm at too <laughs> yes <laughs> so i want to start off this conversation with you which number one i want to tell you thank you for saying yes Oh, I for sure. That. I'm so excited. I'm such yes. a big fan. Oh, I appreciate that. Same here. I appreciate that so much. Where did you, where did the name for your account come from? Because I see the ha ha. And so I'm already understanding, clued in that we're going to have comedy. But where did Maggie May ha ha originate from? So um, my name is Maggie. Okay. Everyone's always called me Maggie May. That's my stage name. And uh, I just thought it would be funny because everybody else was doing, uh, you know, their name and comedy and their name and, you know, comedian and whatnot. And I was just like, Maggie May, huh? <laughs> <laughs> just just to it. that little giggle that people always be doing. <laughs> yes, I know, right? I know, right? Um, the older now I get, the more I turn into Dr. Hibbard from <laughs> The Simpsons. Just kind of giggling after <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness so the simpsons is like a whole nother conversation it is still kicking strong after all these is, years yes and nobody's really had to age up <laughs> yeah yeah i yeah but, i'm a huge fan i'm i'm caught up on all of the episodes um i saw uh the recent one did you uh, i don't know if you keep up but uh where their one bar friend died what? and i had, Oh, wait, not Mo. He's the bartender. Larry. Larry. Yeah, yeah he's just that dude that with like the the weird looking hair at the end. He died, but I oh. just finished asking my boyfriend like a year ago. I was just like, "Who's this guy and this guy?" He's always sitting with a guy with a green hat. Okay. And they never explain who either one of them are. Oh. They wow. explain Larry because Larry died, but I was like, "Now who is Green Hat?" Now, <laughs> like they never talk about him. They, they, they always have something there to leave you guessing, and then you come back for the next episode. I haven't seen The Simpsons in quite some time, only because it is more of adult content. So we have little ones, so I haven't let yeah. them watch it. Like, you know, Daddy and I haven't really let them watch it. But that used to be my show. Yeah. I, that's something yeah. that, like, during my own adult time, I like that. I like some King of the Hill. <laughs> my favorite show. I'm a Texan, so... 
I yes. have to. <laughs> you have to is right. Now I want to ask you, what made you go into comedy? It's something that I have always wanted to do, like legitimately always wanted to do. I was a kid and I was like, yeah, I want to be a comedian. I want to be an actress. I want to be a comedian. Um, that was always something I always wanted to do. I didn't know how. I didn't know, um, you know, I knew I couldn't go to college and like graduate and then become a comedian. I knew that wasn't a thing. Um, so I was, as a kid, I was like, some kind of way, one of these days, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to find it. And I'd write like little sketches, little funny skits and whatnot. And I'd always just kind of put them to the side because I was like, ah, oh, this isn't ready. I got to be perfect if I want to go to an open mic, <laughs> which is <laughs> a joke. <laughs> but, uh, That's true. That's yeah, true. I went That's to an open true. mic and I was just like, wow, I was trying to be perfect for this. <laughs> like, <laughs> anybody's here. But just one day I wrote a set and I was just like, ah, oh, this is funny, but it's not ready. And like, voice in my head was just like, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. Yes. And that scared me so much that I was just like, I just called a comedy club in the city where I was living and was just like, I don't know what I need to do to get on the open mic. Back in those days, you called me, leave a message to get on the mm -hmm. list. And I was just mm -hmm. like, I know. my name is Maggie. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've never done this before. Here's my social. Like, like I just gave them way too much information on the phone. <laughs> Just book me, please. Yeah. So yeah, I, I totally get it. Uh, we had to do the same thing too, as far as like calling in, and eventually, uh, you had to like do everything online or to lock your position in. Yeah, and because uh, like I said, my husband and I, we we did comedy for a while, then we even hosted our own open mics for a bit. And I actually advise anyone, like especially if you're shy, get into comedy, yeah. even if you do it just for sixty days or ninety days do yeah. it because it it's definitely life-changing it it helps you get familiar with yourself get a little bit more funny in your life and like you said there is no perfect set because depending on who your audience is you could be perfect and accurate and have your stuff down pat and if you have a dry audience they're not going to laugh at anything you can fumble and tumble and just like stutter all over your your lines and have that same audience and they love yeah. it yeah <laughs> And I will tell you, hosting an open mic, that's some wild work, because I hosted an open mic for five and a half years. Oh, <laughs> so wow. I already know God bless you. <laughs> it, 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 it's not at the time for the week. My mother was watching our children, because we have 10 kids. And so she we didn't have 10 then, but we did have some children. And she was watching them, and she'd be like, go and have fun and have, have a blast. And we were just like, this isn't fun because <laughs> it's but you know it is fun it is fun but it's a lot of it, you're more behind the scenes yeah. where you're taking care of all the business and making sure that people are are hitting their time and then yeah you, know, you have some comics that don't want to come off of the stage and it, it can be very um challenging all of that it's just it's yeah. a lot it is yeah. it really really is so I, I feel for you. Do you still host open mics? No. <laughs> I don't blame you. No, I don't. Right I don't blame you. It's it's fun, but it's a lot of work. It really, really is. Yeah. And uh, then you get into you know people wanting to get paid for their open mics and all that stuff. So. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like you're coming over here to test out your stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So you noticed that you had crickets during your whole set. What do you want to be paid? Peace of mind? Because <laughs> I got down. here on TV and I did you a favor by booking in. And so I need gas to get back where I need to go. <laughs> <laughs> you need to go somewhere, but you're not going to get any gas money for it. <laughs> Next time, take a bus. Take a bus. There you go. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I totally get it. Now, with your page, one of the things I love is that you're able to blend comedy and you're able to blend your skits in with your dolls. Have you always been a Barbie girl, like since you were young? Always, always. I still have some of the dolls that I grew up with. It's it's funny. Like, I've moved with these dolls. Like, I have, like, a bag of dolls that I've had since I was a kid that I moved them with me to Austin and I moved them with me to LA and uh, during the pandemic when I really started getting into like dioramas and making like scenes and things like that uh, the older Barbies that I had those were the first ones that I made a diorama with because it's so like it. 
old school, like Jazzy. Remember Barbie's yeah. cousin Jazzy? Yeah. I, I still yeah. got one of those. <laughs> she's in a she's in a little sweater dress that I got from the top of a, a Tito's vodka. You know, over the <laughs> the holiday when they have them in Tito's vodka, yeah. a little sweater. Yes, yeah. oh my God, what I, I got one of those sweaters, and it was like. All this right, now you're cute, little sweater dress. That's she how looks I look like a very, knows. yes, she looks Once, like a stylish drunk, but it's white. <laughs> Anything starts looking like a miniature. You're like, oh, should I throw this away? No. I found some gold, uh, little like twist ties the other day. And well, actually, it's for my, my hair. I did my hair, and so I had these little gold twist ties left over. And I was about to throw it away. Then I was like, no, this could be jewelry. Yes. This could be used for the armbands for my doll. Yes. And then my kids were like, that could be a belt, or this could be this. It's like, we're keeping it. There yeah. is no trash. <laughs> I even have my boyfriend doing that. Like, he'll bring me something and be like, this looks like something. <laughs> I know you can use this for something. And I'm like, oh my goodness, that's a faucet, or that's a mess. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. And it, I love that because it allows you to be creative. Yeah. It allows you to repurpose and, you know, recycle, upcycle, and just be able to use what you have and have fun with it. And one of the things that I really do enjoy with your page is that you have organic play in that we see your hand, we see you moving the dolls, you know, and you hear your, you know, and you're doing the voiceover with the dolls. And it just takes me back to when I played in that same way or when I'm interacting with my girls and we're, we're having our playtime. What made you decide to do things organically? I honestly thought it was funny. I thought it was like really funny to just like see hands in there moving dolls around. Um, it's kind of a, like, I don't want to say break the fourth wall but kind of like and like a wink to the audience of like i know what this is like i'm not trying to make this into something it's not this isn't some blockbuster movie this is remember this is dolls you know exactly. and you know i have i'm not really one that keeps dolls in boxes but i do have one doll in a box my uh nigerian barbie uh -huh. you can see her back there yes this this one is also in a box because I um, I made her into a Malibu Stacy for Halloween. Okay. Yeah, because I was Smithers, and so I was just like, ah, I can't take her out of the box now. But like, oh, the, yes. the Nigerian Barbie will show up in some of the things, and she runs on in a box, and I think that's just the funniest thing. <laughs> just to have like, like a doll it. in a box in their uni like in their universe, yeah. who's just yeah. they're all out, and this one's in a box. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Why not? And it's our world yeah. to do what we want. What is it that made you decide to blend in your comedy with your dolls? Or was it just like a no brainer? Just like, I'm just going to do yeah. that without even thinking. Yeah. It's like, a, for me, it's kind of like a comic strip that I don't have to draw. You know? Yeah. It's like a 90 second. Let me see if I can make a quick or a dumb joke in 90 seconds. And let's see if I can just, you know get it done in that short of amount of time or like uh, I like to make sketches and I like to you know make little short things but I don't necessarily want to have to like deal with the logistics of you know let me let me get all my friends together let me cast this let me see who's going to be good at the, let me see what time you know sometimes it's 11 30 at night and I got a good idea and I'm up and I just want to tape it really quick and be done with it. And with dolls, I've got a cast full of yes. a cast full of people who can't say no. <laughs> <laughs> well, they can fall on you. That's yeah. their way of rebelling. They don't exactly. fall down and don't fall going to stuff down. You got to rebuild it. And <laughs> yeah, they do do that. They, <laughs> they will be. They, no, I they be a lot. I had one doll just like. Re used to be posed in a certain way and she was articulated instead of made to move mm -hmm. and i got so frustrated and i was like you know what forget it i'm just gonna go with her emotions and i liked it better when i went with her movements instead but yeah 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 but still they're not as challenging as we humans can be especially when you talk about late nights and someone may be you know asleep or whatever the case is and just like yeah, yeah like it's done now oh, my dog <laughs> Dolls know their lines immediately. They show up to set off book. They are ready to go. They don't need a break. It's it's perfect case scenario for me. Exactly. You you already pay them once, and you don't have to keep on yeah, paying each and every. Exactly. Time. Exactly. 
and I pop up in them sometimes. I think that's funny too, how they like interact with me. <laughs> it is, it is, it's such a joy. Now when it comes to the storylines and the skits that you make, like, are you writing those ahead of time? Or when I say like ahead of time, are you writing them like weeks ahead of time? Or are you just like, like, like you said, like you wake up and you're just writing it down and then going right into filming? Some, some of them I just, uh, I'll get an idea and I'll just, uh, kind of outline it out and then go into it. Some of them, um, it's, yeah, I don't think any of them I've ever like written far in advance. Everything has always been like the day of or the day before, or I've gotten an idea and I finally sit down and think about it and then I can do it. But, um, you know, as long as I can outline it really quickly, it's, you know, and on believe- and popping for that day. Yeah. I, I, I totally get that because I believe that's the same true with comedy. Like yeah. our comedy usually has to be fresh. I've heard some comedians and they'll have like the same joke that they may do for five years, six years. And then, you know, and, and that's them, you know, that, that that's what works for them. And it can still be funny. It can still be funny. But a lot of times you, you have to have new and fresh material uh, to really, you know, keep your audience hooked. Yeah. Keep it interesting for yourself, too, because like, you know, I. I understand doing the same jokes if you're working on them, you know, and like, you know, tweaking them and kind of figuring out, uh, you know, new orders for things or new tags or stuff. But like, you know, especially with the open mic, there were people there who were doing the same exact jokes the whole five years. And it was just like, you're not tired of this already. Like you're not tired. Your mouth is not tired of saying this. Like, you don't have anything else to say. This is the, okay, cool, cool. I, cool. I totally <laughs> get it. I get it. And I've heard that as well. And I, I believe whenever you're a writer, regardless if it's in comedy or whatever it is that genre that you get into, part of it is people watching and part of it is experiencing. And you should be able to somehow write that into some fresh material. In my opinion, just in my opinion. I think so too. It's like, a broken clock is right twice a day, you know? And so, you know, so when somebody has like the three jokes they do, it's like, is this your, is this your 8 a.m. and 8 p.m.? Or (laughs) is there more to you? (laughs) You know, are we just catching you at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m.? Or do you have other, other funniness about yourself? You know? I agree. It's a pushing. It's a, you know, don't be scared. Just do it, you know? Try it. You're right. Fear could definitely be part of it where they're like, I know for sure I get a laugh out of these six jokes. Um, yeah. Sometimes you know, really depending on how long a joke is, you could probably get three jokes or six or seven jokes. And so you're like, I know this set gives me laughs. That's what I'm going to do. But like you said, it's about not being afraid, trying something new, throwing it out there. And sometimes you do get a heckler or two, but you have to yeah. be able to handle that too. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to stand up and skit, which one do you kind of like more or do they both kind of have their own place? That is very difficult because there are things about each that I like. Um, sketch. Uh, I'm also in a sketch group. I love that. Cause I love the collaborative part of it. I love interacting with other people and acting with other people. And that's like, that's also been a dream is like, I've always wanted to just, You know, doing sketch is just something that I love doing. Stand-up is, like, it's awesome because it's all on you, you know. If you bomb, you have not taken anybody down with you. You know, if you do well, it's just you. Like, you're saying exactly what you want to say. Nothing has had to be filtered through anybody else but you. Like, it is all you, all, you know, the the opinions come straight from the mouth. You know, this, (laughs) you know, no one else was involved with this, like, with, you know, uh, but like with making sketches like that, that's also fun because I get to be behind the scenes. I get to like direct the whole thing. I get to make a sketch exactly how I would do it if there were like seven of me, you know? Yeah. But the downside to that is there's a limit to what, to how much I can actually be in it. It's just pretty much my voice and like, 
you know, if I want to have a cameo in it, there, you know, there have been a few times that I've cameoed and, you know, go back and forth with the dolls and stuff. But there, I mean, it's a limit. Like, I can't really work off of them. Um, yeah. But, you know, so they all have their, you know, their best parts and their drawbacks and they're all pretty they're all pretty equal it balances out I, I i can definitely see that i can definitely see that i mean the beautiful thing about sketch comedy whenever you're working with individuals is that you know we can move our body parts yeah <laughs> and, when you start talking hot, and you don't really have to write everything in the caption well for me because i'm writing in the caption or you don't have to do voiceovers and you know do any inflections with the voice in order to make the characters sound different because you literally have humans that are um, putting their own voice and their input into it but I can fully understand what you mean by each one has their, their positives and each one has their own drawbacks. Yeah. I believe one of the fears, like we said before, uh, for a lot of different people when it comes to doing comedy, be it in sketch form, skits, or stand-up, or even putting comedy into our storylines, is that they are afraid of hecklers. Do you have any advice for how someone could handle a heckler? Um... So in if I'm doing stand up and someone is heck because most hecklers that you come across aren't gonna be like, Boo, you suck, this is terrible. Yeah, they're just, more. <laughs> yeah, they just will talk along with you because they wanna be part of the show. And um the best way to not let someone be part of the show is just ignore them. Like I will just roll right through somebody who is trying to talk while I'm talking. I don't even care. I will not, you know, that's one, you know one tactic I do. Um, some people like to like interact and whatnot. Um, that's just not what I like doing. You know what I mean? This is not a conversation. This is not, you know, a call and this is, you know, I'm holding the microphone for a reason. Like this is my time I'm supposed to be talking. So like, I know that you will be quiet if I stop, if I don't give you any attention. And uh, I don't, I, you know, I don't care what you saw on the internet. You know, we're not all going to involve y'all into our shows. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Um, I did recently have a couple of ladies. They were, they were so sweet, and they were just having a great time. They were like, you know, wanting to be a part of the, sh you know, wanting to respond back. I could hear them backstage. They were doing this with everybody. <laughs> but this guy was telling his joke, and as he's telling the joke, one of them was like, "Then what happened?" And it's like. <laughs> did you think i was just gonna walk off the stage and i tell you what happened like i'm getting to it are you kidding <laughs> but they were those kind of people they just wanted to participate and wanted to be part of it and they were just very excited and they were in the front row um they were trying that during my set and i was just smooth ignoring them uh i bumped into them i walked out and they went to uh get some cigarettes <laughs> and i was walking out they're like oh you blah 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 this and that and you know oh we like this you're talking about dolls and stuff like that so i sat them there and i made them watch doll videos on my phone i was just like okay you're gonna you're gonna heckle i'm going to sit here and make you watch this for a while and they liked it in the beginning they were like oh my gosh i oh my god you uh oh, you did undersell it like you were you were not lying you know you really about this life and then like towards like the third or fourth video i had them watch they were like yeah this is this is funny but i, I also kind of want to go sit now i want to get back to my drink and i was just like all right well this is this is practical heck you know, that's heckling for you you know when someone's trying to do something and you're in the way and like kind of getting in the way of them being able to do that or get their joke out that's one thing this is me and i'm in the way of you being able to sit down and go watch the show and go drink your drink again and everything i am heckling <laughs> in a sense heckling you from getting like back it. i'm reclaiming my time that all the rest of the community Comedians had to spend talking to you and whatnot. <laughs> this is me reclaiming all of our time. So, and like then there's somebody binge. else on stage. You can't heckle them right now. You're out here watching videos. <laughs> I love it. I love it because in so many ways, as comedians, you do become family. So it's like, how can I help the other comedians while they're on stage, where it's not a problem for them as well with the same group of people or duel that's in right. uh, in, in cahoots right now. Yeah. <laughs> And we'd all been warned. They were like front row, <laughs> two ladies front row. <laughs> They're wild. Just watch out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and you know now with everything being virtual, uh, we we have comedy that's virtual, which 
I I never thought that I would see so such an explosion of it. Quite honestly, because you know we're coming from the old school, <laughs> and now virtual comedy is just as, as explosive as stand up in person. Has that in any way heightened what you do in advance what you do as a comedian and a comic? Um, for me, it's just like a different muscle. Like I was one of the comedians that was, I was all over online shows. I didn't care. Like there were some comedians that were like, this feels weird. I'm not into it. I mean, I lived alone during the pandemic. I was on my laptop as much as I could. I was like, oh, there's people meeting up somewhere. Y'all show up and I'll tell jokes. Y'all are having emo night. I went to emo night every week during the pandemic. We yeah. would meet up like back in from Austin, like we would meet up online and listen to emo music together. And like, then, yeah. so, so I was all over on these shows. I was like, shoot, wake up at three o'clock, do a show in Australia. Sure, I'll be there. I was Adam, you yeah. know, cause I was, it's just a different muscle in like, you're not going to feel anything. You know, you're not going to feel that there is no energy to feel. You're not going to, you just got to like, keep it on gallery mode. Look at the people, look and see if they're having a good time and smiling or leaning forward or whatnot. You just got to like pick up on different, you got to get a, you, you got to get your jollies in different ways. You know, like mm -hmm. our currency is laughter and we're waiting to hear the laughter. And, um, I mean, you'll hear it, and then sometimes you'll hear it, like, delayed, which is a new, that's a whole nother thing of, like, you'll say the joke, you'll say the punchline, your heart will drop because people didn't get it, you'll start your next joke, and then you'll hear a big laugh, and it's like, oh, <laughs> y'all are just barely hearing, and then you'll pause, and <laughs> so it's like, learning that everything kind of has a delay, and kind of, like, <laughs> Yeah, realizing how to still your emotions during that and realizing how to like, you know, just adapt to something that's like a different beast from what you're used to, what you're used to writing. I agree. I fully, fully agree. And I feel that what you do with your dolls, it blends in so much with our new landscape as far as how things are virtually. And um, I, I enjoy it. I really, really enjoy yeah. it. Thank the you. One that you had. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it, y'all, because it's part of the comedy. Super bitch. I was like, what? You mean the superb itch? Where does she come from? Where does she originate from? I have to know. <laughs> oh, she, she, I got her in a doll bundle. I... I bought some dolls from someone because I wanted a couple of them, but it came in like a, like there were like six dolls. I only wanted two and she was like one of the ones. I don't know if you can see her right here. No. And my camera's doing a little, little something odd right now. I was trying to fix it because I am in, I'm in buffer mode. I'm Mine keeps, uh, keeps focus. Focusing and unfocusing, but okay. I put her out on the uh, on the little balcony, just kind of like hanging on for her life. And I just thought it was funny, like, oh wow, here's the superhero yeah. who can like, you know, barely fly. She's not doing a good job. You know, she's hanging off the side. This one here is like looking for something, and I put a lot of little fun stuff into her bed that she could be looking for. She's got a messy room, <laughs> real messy. But I, I love the idea of this, like, superhero that's just, like, not good at what she does, but she's trying. And I was like, okay, so what would her story be? What would her deal be? Super, this, this superb bitch, super bitch. And then she can't even get that part right. So um, I thought that would be very funny, too. I do. I do. I really do enjoy her. Um, now, by chance, the and this is one of the questions that I had earlier, and I didn't get a chance to ask. With the uh, jokes that you have your dolls do, are these also the jokes that you have when you're on stage? Like, are we getting that mm -mm. sneak peek? No. <laughs> uh, there's one specific one. Um, there's a girl who does, uh, she has the stand-up open mic in the cafe. Okay. And I, my whole idea for her was that she was going to be terrible. She's terrible at comedy. She's not good at all. She's hacky. 
She's bad. Mm -hmm. The only reason she gets to do comedy here is because she started the show. <laughs> and she books no one else. <laughs> she's the only one on it. Like she's, you know, she's the one doing it. And I've had her do a few jokes and they're like all nods to the fact that she's a doll. Like, um, she, you know, oh, you know, you're not that well articulated. I'm made to move and you're all stiff. You know, it's that kind of, you know, that kind of humor. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. what would it, what would a doll go kind of yeah, like what what would a doll find funny but also hacky? <laughs> what would a, I like what would that? A doll Just call out the right. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Now, in comedy, do you have any um, comedians that are mentors to you or that you look up to that inspire what you do as a comedian? I am a huge huge fan of wanda sykes wanda sykes is amazing she like if you watch her comedy specials from like the 90s they still hold up like she is so amazing and so wonderful and successful and i think she's underrated like everybody loves her and i think that they should love her even more i think that she should have a, you know she should have several statues of her everybody needs to be like she's incredible you know i just i love wanda sykes and i just feel like whatever love she gets uh she deserves even more and yes. uh, i am personally offended that <laughs> she's not getting even more love than she is i mean she's on three shows she should be on eight you know, she, you know, she has this much money. She should have five times that much money. Like she could get even more of everything. I agree. I fully, fully agree. There's been multiple movies that she's done, especially early on in her career that without her, and I'm thinking of right now, um, down the earth, I do believe with Chris Rock, which was a really good movie. I, I enjoyed it a whole lot, but her role, although it was small, made an impact in that movie yeah. and there's been a lot of other movies that you know her comedy chops is just it's there um oh my gosh i loved her in monster-in-law once again small role but she was uh, amazing oh, like that yeah <laughs> you know she's definitely that secret ingredient to almost anything that she gets involved in yeah so i i fully you know i, I support what you're saying yeah. as far as wanda sykes because she is an amazing comedian and actress yeah and she's able to really handle both very smoothly because not everyone can do that there's some uh comedians and i'm thinking of some female comedians in my head right now and they use so much of their energy to be funny which doesn't anything against that but they use a lot of energy to be funny and it kind of takes away from their acting style and you know it's there you see it but they just need to kind of allow themselves to just be funny i yeah. remember when my husband and i were in comedy together uh one of his comedy mentors told him just be funny he's like don't be funny just be funny and like literally yeah. just naturally be funny don't you don't have to force it to make it happen you yeah. know come out but when you're yeah, trying to be funny people can see the effort you know and they want to see it effortless they want to see it look like it's just coming off the top of your head they just i mean yes. they don't want to see you work <laughs> <laughs> i could do that yeah <laughs> Yeah, they wanted they wanted to look easy and attainable and something that like you know oh that seems fun that seems good no they don't want to see you up there sweating and <laughs> no, no, no. having a hard I time. I, and that reminds me. I, I'm so sorry, but when you said that, it reminded me of Dave Chappelle, and he was doing uh, he was doing a stand up piece, and the young man stood up and he was just like, "What can I do so I could do the same thing you're doing?" And Dave was just like. Okay, I guess I'm making it look so effort that you know effortless that anyone can do this, right? <laughs> like, this guy's been in the game since he was a teenager, and he's put a lot of time into it, a lot of energy, and a lot of losses, a lot of wins. It just doesn't happen that easy. There is work. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's a you can tell a man said that because that is such a a man type attitude for it girl let me tell you why did somebody who had never it was a dude that i was talking to who worked at a comedy club never did comedy ever and we were talking about something and he was talking about he was 
writing some movie or whatever and he was thinking about trying stand up just to you know for the movie so he would have an idea for the movie and he was just like so like right now technically you're better than i am at stand up and i was like no 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 right now i'm better than you at stand up and i will continue to be better at you than stand up until i take like an 11 year break and allow you to catch up are you kidding you've never done stand up before and you're telling me you're technically better than you bro i've been on tv like come on what are you talking about you know, and I hate to flex on people like that, but I was just like, you really have the hubris right now to just be like, oh, mm -hmm. well, technically, I guess you are better. What do you mean? I mm -hmm. you guess I am, but you've never tried this. You've never done it. He was very confident, very confident. He's like, I, you know, I love the one that is like, well, I've gotten drunk and made my friends laugh. <laughs> your friends are concerned for your well-being. They're going to laugh. And yeah, they were also there. So like, it's it's gonna be funny. Like, go do that in front of some people who do not care what happens to you after the end of your set. Like, go do that to some people who like, you know, cause first few times I did stand up, I thought people were laughing to be nice. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, no, they're just, they're being patronizing. They're laughing to be nice just because I'm a nice looking girl. They're just being nice. And then I went to like a show where it was like, you know, we had a big contest in Austin and like, the place was packed, everyone brought their friends, everyone brought their, like, it, it was a packed show that, like, people didn't really get an opportunity to perform at, you know, if they were, at, like, if you weren't at a high level, you really didn't have the opportunity to perform in front of so many people. And that wow. night, I was just like, oh, they're not laughing at some of these people. <laughs> like, they're, oh, wow, they really don't care about these people's mental health after this. They Thank really you. don't care. No. And I was like, okay, they must just okay. I must be funny then. <laughs> like they're not really like because these people do not care. They don't. They really don't. They don't care if you go home and cry yourself to sleep after this. They really don't. Your friends do. They want you to feel good about it. They want you to feel okay. They want you to feel sane and like you know, yeah, like your little jokes are working. Strangers, no. They got a they babysitter. They you better be funny. They don't care about your <laughs> life. They don't. Oh, they don't. Mm -hmm. And when you know someone and then you have like your inside jokes, yeah. you've had experiences yeah. together, you know, you'll, you'll be able to laugh about it because, hey, we both went on that camping trip and the bear ate through our food and it was funny. Yeah. But if you tell that to people who were not on the camping trip with you and they haven't known you for five or six years or growing up with you, it won't matter. Yeah. And I think one of the worst things that I have experienced that comedians have done, especially when they're newbies, is they will get up there and say, you know, last time I was up here, I cried and I really did. You know, I felt so hurt because you guys didn't laugh at my jokes and you didn't. I'm like, oh, just use this time to do the joke. Like, don't worry about what happened last time. No. And I would even say, no. say that, with, you know, if you're you're doing comedy uh, with your your dolls and if it bombs, it doesn't go well, it goes right over people's head. Don't make another post and be like, no one understood the comedy last time and it bothered me. <laughs> no, nobody wants to hear that. Like, it's not a. You know, when you get up there and start bringing up old shit, I'm like, why are you doing this? Like, you just yes. let some people know you sucked last time. They weren't here last time. They didn't not laugh at you, but they'll not laugh at you now. Like, yeah. this is not therapy. <laughs> you know, like, it's people love to personal say, therapy, But it's not like therapy where you got where everybody in the audience is now your counselor. Yes. Yeah. Comedy is cathartic. Yeah. It is not therapy. Yeah. And people don't see that like. I heard somebody say once, they say, comedy is therapy only if you don't care about getting any better. So, <laughs> which is true. Like therapy, That's the point true. of therapy is to become a better person. Comedy, comedy doesn't in and of itself make you a better person. You just get some stuff off your chest. You yeah. finally feel seen. You finally feel heard and whatnot. Like that <laughs> screaming into a void. <laughs> That's cathartic, but it's not helping you. Yeah. You're not working through anything. Nobody, you're not bouncing anything off anybody. No one's going to heckle you with like, maybe you call your dad. Like no one is going to like try to help you to <laughs> do anything. <laughs> but imagine. They did though. <laughs> that was a good one. Call your dad. <laughs> That's doing your trauma. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, when we talk about punchlines and callbacks, how does that work for you when with working with dolls? Because that's a, a difference when doing, um, 
you know, stand up. Yeah. Uh, so I try to make the little short ones like 90 seconds or 60 seconds even, um, which can be a little hard to make callbacks for. I've tried to like do callbacks to other videos, which I don't know if they land, but they land for me. So I guess that's, <laughs> that's all that counts. I'm like, one of these days I'm going to put them all on YouTube in a row yep. and then people are going to know what I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> you can see why this is funny, <laughs> but you know, right. you know I have right it. now I just got to settle for like, this is funny to me. I've seen all of them. And so this works in my head and like, hopefully there's like other stuff in it. That's also funny to someone who hasn't seen anything, but like, I'll try to like slip those in, not as like the main kind of joke, but just as a, mm -hmm. you know, if you're really paying attention, here's a little something that, uh, you know, a little Easter egg that I found funny <laughs> from like there the other go. video. Yeah. I like that. I don't think I everybody's like that. really looking like that, but I am. Well, so. <laughs> I'm thinking of the one lady that you have that works in the shop that no one can really figure out what kind of shop it is. Yeah. It was like a perfect <laughs> shop. And she gives me such an Adam Sandler vibe off of, um, oh goodness, what movie was it? Hot Chick? Hot Chick? And Adam Sandler was playing those bongos. <laughs> Do you remember that I one? I don't think I saw that one. Oh goodness, it was like the one, I can't even think of this guy's name, but he had an earring that he put on and the other girl had the earring, they swapped bodies, it was like a Freaky Friday kind of thing. I and, see. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, the hot chick. Yeah, the hot chick. Okay, and Adam yeah. Sandler was playing the bongo. So whenever I see the girl that's in your diorama, she like, she, she brings back that whole vibe for me. Because I thought Adam Sandler, which I love Adam Sandler, I just thought, you know, he was hilarious in that role. So when I see her, she's just got this whole chill vibe. And then you have homegirl with the horns coming up. That's the, <laughs> the Natalie Nunn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because she's got a big Rob chin. Snyder. So it's just like, like Rob Snyder. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But that's like, yeah. that's actually one of the callback jokes that I was trying to kind of yeah. do. It's like, she... I, I kind of like coded her to be like a stoner type. And so I coded it to be like, oh, it's a, it's a dispensary she's going to be opening. Cause you know, she showed up that one episode and was just like, I made you cookies. And then she's like, oh no, I ate the cookies. I'm sorry. I brought a, well, I don't know. And so in a later episode, her aunt Nigerian Barbie comes and is just like, Oh my God, I ate the cookies that you left there. Oh my God, this woman behind the mic is so funny. Oh my God. Like, so she's like laughing at like everything. So, you know, I was thinking, okay, they, you know, if you watch the one prior or if you watch the one with this girl prior, you know that she ate a bunch of cookies. Presumably they're pot cookies yes. and she's like high off of them. And so presumably the aunt found the pot cookies, ate them, you know, loves this terrible comedy and is, you know, allowing them to expand, you know, cause she's got all this Nigerian oil money, but, um, I love hopefully it. that's funny without it. Then my friend gave me like a whole bunch of surf stuff and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, well, I guess it's a surf shop then. <laughs> I love, I love that. And she sells other stuff on the side and I just kind of left it kind of open-ended to where like, you know, she could, she could still be a sonar. Or she could maybe just be a, a surfer. Just kind of everyone can choose their own adventure and, you know. A stoner that's a surfer. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Look <laughs> real dangerous. <laughs> Thank God she's plastic. That's what we're saying. Right. Don't put that in She'll real life. <laughs> Try not to. <laughs> so would you say that you watch and view a lot of comedy shows a lot of of um, other comedians um maybe not as much as is everybody um i do a lot of comedy shows and so i watch a lot of comedians like i watch a lot of my counterparts like i'll stick around and i'll you know watch sets yeah i love to laugh of course um i'm not really the person who is going to watch a comedy special the day it comes out. That's just not me. Like I'm not 
running out to go see Joe Rogan's new one or running out to go see Dave Chappelle's new one. And it's nothing against them. It's just like, that's just not me. I'll catch it eventually. You know, I, y'all, y'all knew I wasn't going to do this. And there are plenty of people who are out there who are going to run out and check it out the first day it comes out. I'll see it eventually, maybe. But, um, you know, I'm not a, I'm not one of those on the prowl persons. I like I have I my, hand, my eyes on my own paper a lot of the time, so I know it's, you know, I know you do need to be paying attention to what other people are doing, but like I'm paying a lot of attention to what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. I get it. I really, really do. Uh, a sister of mine, a friend of mine, who's a sister of mine, we had a conversation recently. And she was saying, you know, right now she's in the midst of writing. And so she's not doing as much reading because she doesn't want to unconsciously take what she reads and yeah. then apply that into her own writing. And I totally get it. I totally get it. Is that any way that you feel about comedy? Like if you see someone stand up or especially like we talk about, you know, Netflix specials or this and that. And no, this is not sponsored by Netflix, but any kind of special that's out there and you watch that or view it, are you concerned about applying that into your own comedy unconsciously? Yeah. yeah, because like you'll watch these things and like for me, I'll be coming up with tags of what people are saying, you know, I'll just be like, oh, and then this, oh, and this, oh, he forgot to say this, oh man, he should have said this or he should have said that. And you yeah. get you know, tags on somebody's thing and then it's just like, well, you know, should I do the premise and then come up with all these tags? But then it's like, that's whack because this is not my premise, you know? And like, yeah. no one owns a premise, but it's like, I don't know. It kind of feels whack to like watch somebody talk about something and then be like, okay, well now here's my, here's my two cents on the thing that you decided to talk about that I had no interest in talking about until I heard you talking about it. It just feels okay. whack, you know, like, mm -hmm. and again, it's like, I'm, I do comedy to talk about things from my perspective and my point of view. And if it's, you know, if I'm just feeling the need to be reactive or like to, you know, respond, you know, responsive to other people's points of view and responsive to like what they've said, that just, that doesn't really feel as authentic, authentic to myself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I totally get that. I totally get that. And I know in my case, um, cause I do have some favorites. I have some favorites out there and I, well, especially while I was doing stand up comedy, I had to stop listening because I know when the, the Dave Chappelle, you know, when, when he had his ongoing sitcom or yeah, well, not really a sitcom, but you know, when he had his sketch comedy going on, oh my Lord, like we took those little phrases and just anything that, that, that was going on in life, you know, you would catch yourself saying it. So that yeah. was a concern for me when I was doing on, you know, when I was on stage is that I didn't want to listen to other comedians, especially someone that I may favor and accidentally apply that into my, my jokes because it's yeah. just, it's, it's, you know, it's just a matter of respect too. You know, if you really do respect yeah. your, your comedian counterparts. So you want to make sure that you're allowing them to have their space yeah. with their material. And you don't want to unintentionally intentionally pick up their mannerisms because like you know even especially in like hosting an open mic uh, you can see uh, whose favorite comedian is who, you know because they'll be talking like them and they'll be acting like them and they'll be mimicking their mannerisms and it's like mm -hmm. uh okay i get it you like lewis black <laughs> there's one lewis True. black and you're not him so you don't have to like, you know, it's, I feel like a lot of the time that people hinder their own style and just trying to emulate the people that they like and emulate the people that are, you know, their heroes and everything mm -hmm. like that. And I get it. Like, those are your heroes. Those are your inspirations. But it's like, there is a line, you know, there is a point to where it's just like, you're just doing a bad impression of Chris Rock right now. You're talking about yourself, but you're just doing a bad impression of the person that you like and like we can all tell like we're all thinking of the comedian mm -hmm. that you're emulating mm -hmm. while you're doing your set which also takes away from your set because you know nice. all i can think of is like this this looks like a, a discount 
<laughs> this is the bootleg Wanda Sykes right now. <laughs> this is like a a grocery store version of Dave Chappelle. What is going on? This I get it. Kroger brand. <laughs> Chris I Rock. I didn't ask for this. Oh my goodness, you make me think about this one time. I went to the coffee shop and this is gonna be real brief, but I went to the coffee shop and they had these Stevie Wonder tickets. And I want to say like the year before or so many months before my husband and I had went to go see Stevie Wonder and it was like one of our first concerts. And then I see these tickets and they're like for free. And I was like, oh my God, and we had to pay for ours. So I was just like, oh my God, for free, I'm gonna take my mom. So my mom wouldn't feel bad, right? Get her all ready and I'm getting all ready. We get there and we're sitting there and I'm like, okay. You know, we, we paid a little bit of upcharge to sit at, you know, at the balcony and, you know, you got the open bar. No problem. It's free. This is awesome. You know, other than the upcharge, sis, this guy came out and it was not Stevie Wonder. Did not look like him in any which way or shape or form. And he had on the the locks, the wigs. It was a wig with locks. I was like, dude, you would have just did better just coming out with no wig at all. And just like, I, I was... I was not happy. I, my mom still had a good time. She got up and she danced with some strangers and stuff. They were back there just partying. And she's like, oh, this is fun. And I was like, you know what? As long as you're having fun. Since I yeah. couldn't even get up, I was like, what did I just do? Not <laughs> that not you went to go see Stevie Question. No. No. <laughs> you did not go see Stevie Bewildered. I'm so I'm so upset for you. <laughs> I mean, like, I bet you can see. I bet you ain't even blind. Just come up here with a stigmatism. Think that we need. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! So when you say that, it took me there. It took me there because I remember like how I felt, and. And that is how you feel as an audience member, especially if you're a seasoned comedian. You're like, I know who you're trying to emulate right now, and it's not working. Just be yourself. I'd rather you fumble and be nervous yeah. and be scared because you're on that journey of finding out who you are as a host or you're on that journey of find, finding out who you are as a comedian or a comic. Now, I do have a question for you because this was a debate that we had back in the day. Do you feel that there's a difference between the terms comedian and comic? And which one do you prefer? Hmm. I call myself a comic because I feel like comedian is more encompassing. A uh, comic is a stand-up comic. You know, comedian can be, um, you know, a sketch comedian. You know, people who don't necessarily, like I see improvisers call themselves comedians. And I was just like, yeah, okay, yeah, that's, you know, you're a comedian. But comic is a very, I feel like that's the more specific term. I'm both, but I feel like I'm also, all comics are comedians, not all comedians are comics. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. Oh, I like that. Oh, that, that definitely summed it up for me. I like that. <laughs> that ended the debate. <laughs> all comics are comedians, and not all comedians are comics. And it's so, so true, though, especially, yeah. you know, one of the things that, that it has been harsh, a harsh reality for me has been the couples comedy because my husband and I were already doing you know comedy prior to and now that we have all these different social media platforms you have so many people that are just coming out of the woodwork sharing comedy which is beautiful it is beautiful because you know more laughter especially <laughs> during depressing times you need more laughter but it's just some people are just literally taking a an, an audio that was you know that, that's gotten a lot of popularity and they're dubbing that over their video and you're just seeing it be recycled and recycled and recycled and it's not authentic it's just like um I, I remember there was one and i did laugh about one the first one i saw i thought was hilarious but the little girl has this milk and it's sour and she's at her grandmother's house i think and she's like choking on my husband she sent it to me a few times and i laughed every time uh she drinks the milk and she's like like you know she gets real sick and she falls out she passes out and so then i saw that get repeated several times and we would sit there and just be like oh that one's not even funny and and i just wonder how do you feel about that whenever you see and i i mean i've even seen it in our own doll world which isn't that bad for me because we we don't do the 
voiceover narrative as much as humans do. So how do you feel about that as far as seeing these, you know, comedy uh, skits or sketches with these narratives that are popular and it's just done over and over and over again? Oh, I'll say this. Um, the people who take the audio and then they just do the voiceover and they just like do it in their voice, that's whack. As whack as hell. It's whack. It's boring. You've added nothing to it. You're just like saying some stuff another funny person has said and you're just like repeat. It's the same as yeah. like, uh, you know, those people who make those reaction videos, but like yeah, they don't yeah. say anything. It's just their head there and they're like, some of them don't even like be reacting. They're just there like, and it's like, what have you added to this? Like, I see people eat cereal while the reaction video, like, like they're giving a reaction, but they're just like eating. And I'm like, <laughs> is this branded content with Lucky Charms or what is going on right now? Because I'll have, like, there are people who will make reaction videos where they will come back and they'll, like, make jokes or they'll make a commentary or they'll say something. Um, I can even understand, like, doing a reaction video and, like, you know, m making big reactions to stuff, you know. I yes. just don't understand the sitting there and watching and just... <laughs> I thought it was a group chat at first. When I, some of the ones where people have no reaction at all, and I'm not even like that old, but I am old. But nonetheless, I was, <laughs> I really thought when the people have no reaction, I was like, are they doing a group chat? Like, are they listening? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Really I guess. Are you just listening? What's going on? But no, no. You are reposting the video, and you're just for like, like you know, just like you have added nothing to it. That for me, honestly, that's the same thing as like there are some comedians that are just like very good reporters. You know, the yes. comedians who are like they'll tell stories about their lives and like the punchline is always something that somebody else said to them or like something that somebody else said. And it's like, you haven't said anything funny. You're just telling us about all the funny stuff your mother-in-law said to you. Your mother-in-law should be doing comedy. Like not you, you're yeah. just accurately yeah. reporting somebody who's doing something very fun. And it's just, once you notice it, like someone do it twice, it's like, how many of these jokes Folks are going to be about something funny you said, you know, where, when are you going to say something funny? You're just repeating something that someone funny said around you or to you or in front of you or sent in an eat like, yeah, this is funny, but none of that is because of you. You're just reporting the events. So I think that's whack too, but you know, to each their own. <laughs> I agree. I, I I fully do agree with you. One of the, the, the things that I like about comedians, um, and I'm thinking of two right now. One was my husband's mentor. He did pass away a few years ago. And then there's another, well, I'll tell you a few other comedians. I can't, I can't really say just two, but, but two do come to my mind. Is whenever they take things that's going on historically or that's happened in the past, and then they give you or, or something that happened in the news, and then they're able to take that and then translate it into a joke. Or they take something yeah. that's going on politically and they translate it into a joke that to me is very very clever uh what would be your secret ingredient because sometimes that, that that can get a joke and sometimes it doesn't you know well I, I should say that that can get a laugh and then sometimes it doesn't when it comes to getting a laugh when it comes to getting people to get what you're saying how how do you do that do you have like a secret ingredient to that um couple of things like something I've also I've had to learn one is like I don't like to connect dots for people because I feel like oh it's obvious this is obvious but the more I do this the more I realize that it's not as obvious to some people as you would think That's true. so sometimes you do have to connect the dots for them mm -hmm. and sometimes you do have to like and you can make a joke out of it you can whatnot but like sometimes like people really do need to take you to the water you know need them you to hold their <laughs> yeah, hands to the water mm -hmm. you know so it's like the joke is here and like sometimes you just got to bridge that for them and just realize like they're not they're not in your head they're not gonna, you know, 
instantly come to the 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 thing that you're thinking of like sometimes you know a comedian will tell a joke and they'll get to you know the line before their punchline and i'm already laughing because i know what they're going to say but i'm the only one laughing and then they say what they're going to say and everybody else starts laughing and it's like yeah didn't y'all hear him say this that means that this was coming yes but they don't you know they're not thinking that so it's like i i had to learn you know sometimes connect those dots also despite your best effort everything's not gonna work like some people are just not gonna like whatever joke it is like some jokes are just not gonna be funny to some people and it's like how do you recover from that though so even if your joke doesn't land you can still make it up on the recovery you can still you know get them back on your side you know with this and uh, you know <laughs> One for me that I like to do is, you know, if I'll tell something and it's maybe vulnerable, whatnot, I'll be like, okay, cool. Feel like you guys are judging me now. <laughs> and, <laughs> Thank you, know, you yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, I think yeah, that like really last cool. night. I was just like, okay, cool, cool. Not, not okay. Your judge, judgment, fine. I get it. <laughs> and it's like you're just kind of acknowledging the space and acknowledging that it didn't go well and acknowledging like. You know, yeah, I, 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 I heard y'all not laugh. And this was something that I intended to be funny. But, okay, I guess not. <laughs> I'm okay. I love it. I love it. And see, like, you had one, and I got it. I understood it. But you had the one It was really, really short about the CP, about being on CP time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the character sketch. Yes. 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 How did you come up with that character? I have to ask before we before we dismiss. How did you come up with that character? Oh my gosh, uh, that's one of my favorite characters to play. His name is Knowledge P. Copernicus. Oh wow! And, yes, I just have always thought it would be funny for um, you know someone who just wanted to make a business out of conspiracy theories and like was like hey i, I can get you on the ground floor of some new conspiracies you know? <laughs> and uh so that was his whole deal is he's a conspiracy theorist he really you know loves the conspiracy environment and he wants to get you hip on the new conspiracies coming out he's got his ear to the ground he knows all the top people doing conspiracies and he wants to get you in to that and i just think that's a funny you know, character space. And so we brought, uh, we brought him back, mm -hmm. um, to do, uh, uh, July 10th. He had a July 10th blowout sale. Cause, uh, <laughs> he was a little too late for Juneteenth, but he has a July 10th blowout sale now. And then that video was more just him, like all the stuff that he was selling and like all the stuff that someone who deals in conspiracy theories, would have on hand and would be ready to go, you know, let go in a garage sale kind of situation. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. And one of the things that I enjoy about it is because, like I said, I understood. I understood what CP was. And so for me, I'm like, if someone else was like, well, what is CP? You, um, you know, you explained that in that brief amount. And so I, I believe one of the key things with comedy and that I get from your page and that, of course, you know, I've seen with other comedians and with my own writing is editing. Editing is so key. You know, if anybody does want to get into comedy, be it uh, stand up or sketch or, you know, doing comedy with your dolls or any medium that you have, editing is so, so important. You know, you want to try to get as much meat as you can, but still slice it and <laughs> still make it funny. Yeah. That's why, yeah, yeah, you. that's why you talk about, you know, being able to do it and it's not a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> you if get up there is and make that, it effortless. Yeah, these but yeah, it's a lot of work. 60 second little videos really teach you that because I am a word. I mean, obviously from talking to me, you can tell I'm a wordy person. You know, I will throw words in where they do not need to be. I just I love using words. I'm a word person. I love them. But if you're trying to do something in 60 seconds, you got to really get to your point quick. And so it's been a real exercise and like, get to your point, get to your thing. And, you know, I'm learning a lot with my sketch group, a lot of like, yo, Maggie, this is seven pages. It needs to be four. <laughs> <laughs> this is too much. You can say all of this, but without all of this. And so it's just a lesson of like, 
you know, killing your darlings and like, do you really need this to make the joke? Is this really necessary to make the joke? I know you're trying to connect dots, but do you really need seven lines to connect a dot or can you use the one? So, yeah. I yeah. mean, making those little videos really puts you into that thing because there is nothing worse than like, you know, you need two more seconds to say two more things, but you can't because you have a bunch of filler in the beginning. And now you got to go back and you got to delete all of this other stuff so that you can get the punchline out yes. for the video. Yes. yes. And see, and, and that callback goes all the way back to when we were talking about hosting uh, open mics. Because especially if you have people who are new or even seasoned comedians and comics, what well, comics don't really do as much, but, but you have seasoned uh, comedians and they have new material. And and they kind of, you know, like like their time goes out because they had all that filler in the very beginning or all the explanation in the very beginning. And they're still on stage because they're trying to get to their punchline. And you're kind of like, you know, showing them that light. You know, you got the flashlight going like, hey, time's up, time's sure. up. Because you don't want to, you know, you're, you're still trying to respect them. That's why we do our flashlights. Like, you know, like, hey, time, flashing them. But <laughs> I've stormed Some the stage comedians. before. I've stormed yeah. the stage like the Capitol. <laughs> I have stormed up on stage <laughs> taking the mic from people for I love it. I did that to my dad one time. <laughs> oh gosh. Really? He understood the light. I was just like, Yay, Dad looks you done with it. Yeah. I thought you I thought it, your dad? It, it, Huh? You did you, you you had your dad come off stage? Was that your dad? Yeah. He showed up to my open mic, and I know he'd always wanted to try stand up. You know, med school, he couldn't do it because he was always busy. And he finally, you know, was visiting me, and he was like, "Okay, I can do three minutes." And he was up there, and I, I honestly thought he had to go. I thought he was gonna like. So I was just like, "Okay, we, you know, I, my dad could be up here talking. You know, he could talk." Um, so I didn't want him to like be up there for a half hour, <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, I, I maybe got in front of him a little prematurely, you know. He had, he had went way over his time, <laughs> but uh, I, I thought he had hit the end of his joke because he hit a laugh, and then I hit it from there. But like apparently he hadn't finished his story. He didn't he didn't realize that he was just like I had a great time. I didn't realize that I was happy for the opportunity, but like. Still, <laughs> I was like, it we need to be out of this venue by midnight. <laughs> it's still a lot of people. <laughs> we gotta go. I think, I think, I think our parents are probably a little bit different in that. Not, not, not our parents, but just parents yeah. are different than, than than your average audience in that they feel that if you're funny and you're here because of me, I birthed you, then that means I'm funny. <laughs> um, yeah, 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 yeah. They're gonna take up that time. That's yeah. that's how it goes. I remember when I was doing comedy, my mom was like, "You get it from me. If I, I you could do it, I could do it." <laughs> my dad is funny though, <laughs> and he'd always wanted to do it. I just I remember him talking about like he had always wanted to do it. And he just never had a chance to. And he's like, one day I got out of residency. Mm -hmm on time for the open mic and he's like i drove over there so fast and he's like and they had just ended and i felt oh, so no. sad and so that was like for me like a personal i was like i want you to do this and i want you to try it i think you would find it fun so he did that mic once and then when he came and visited in la i was mm -hmm. doing a show they were like you can do anything just not stand up i was like great i won't do stand up my dad will do stand up and i will heckle him from the audience so we did a little thing together mm -hmm. and i was like and you should say this and you should say that and he's like no 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 i got my own lines and i was like okay daddy good cute and it was really funny okay. like he did he did really i was so happy i was so proud of him <laughs> that's good that is good that is good and i'm not at all talking bad against my mother because i'm pretty sure she's gonna see this oh for, yeah she's already watching. <laughs> <laughs> yes my mom is funny yes you are funny it is so it's we come beast, from a funny it is a different base people can be funny but not good at stand-up Stand up is a beast. Yes, it is. It yes. is the same hand as of it being a beast. It's also quite addictive. Yeah. 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 My husband, he took multiple breaks in between being a, a comedian and and a comic. And I tell you what, because he is very hilarious. Um, 
he's done different contests and shows and so forth. But nonetheless, during one of the breaks, he came back, and this was before I joined him on stage, and I, because I used to just like, you know, tag along with him. And I remember one of the comedians came up to him and he was, and he was someone who had been on TV. I can't even think of who he is, but uh, just memory failure. But nonetheless, they were talking and he was like, comedy is a mistress that you can't let go of. I was like, dang, but it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Comedy is that. That's a, I will not be ignored from that one movie. Basic instinct or whatever. So yes, I will not. I know, be right? <laughs> it just needs you. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, in the middle it's of so the true. night. It just, it, it's you. It's like I can't quit you, comedy. You know, you can quit comedy, but comedy won't quit you. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. It is so true. Literally, because well, we haven't done it in a while, but my husband still. We'll have people that he encounters who's like, do you still have open mics? And someone um, recently DM'd him not that long ago and said, I'm going to be in town and wanted to know where he could, you know, go for some open mics, you know, because he assumed that, hey, we still are in, in that business. And there we were, my husband and I sit on the porch like, are we going to get back into this? <laughs> are we going to do this again? I think you will. <laughs> Bring your dog on down to my open mic. <laughs> I, we were like, my husband's over here. He's trying to like think of like a venue real quick that he can contact so he can go ahead and get this going. I was like, dude, I don't want to rush it. Though. I don't want to rush it. But it's literally, it, it is. It's that 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 one that's calling you in the middle of the night yeah. to come back. Just like you said with basic insulin, it's really hard. Like once when you get bitten, it's like a vampire bite. It's really hard. Yeah, to just let go of comedy it's like, a, comedy it's does like not addiction live. like true addiction <laughs> like if you want to stop doing comedy you have to every day renew your mind and be like i'm not gonna do this i'm not gonna do it's like it's like a, i mean because otherwise you're just like oh well i'm just taking a long break i can get back into that like you have to actively want to quit like if you really like it you've got to actively want to quit because it won't leave you by itself. Now, but if you don't really you like it, you suck. Huh? Mm -hmm. But then when you go through enough in life, you, you really want to, like, listen to some stand-up or watch something that's funny. I mean, like, comedy, I, the Bible says laughter is medicine. Yeah. So it's really hard. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to let go of, of laughing. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and like, I can't yeah. tell you how many times, like, after a show, someone's come up and just been like, hey, I needed that. And it just walks mm -hmm. off. Or, like, I had a couple, they are like, we, have, we, we both lost our jobs today. Like, everything's terrible. Mm -hmm. We just, we really needed to be here. Like, we just really needed to, like, be taken away from, like, our reality of life. That's so, t and it's like, I, I get it. You know, that's why there's TV. That's why there's you know, music. That's why there's like everything that's like there to distract people from the fact that, you know, life is terrible sometimes. Sometimes, like, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> life is just not fun, you know. But, you know, the, the thing, comedy does that for both people. Like it does that for the audience. And then it also does that for the person doing it because it's like, oh, this is. This is fun being in front of people in holy court and like having them laugh at the things that I thought of. Like this is also this is cathartic. It's not therapy. It's cathartic. I like that. I like that. I like that. So if anyone is thinking about getting into comedy, are you already doing so with your storylines or with your photos, however which way? It's definitely something that is beneficial for you. And you never know who in your audience is reading your posts, your reels, your videos, whatever you have posted, and they're being inspired, they're being touched by it, and it's helping them get through their day or get through their situation. So I definitely encourage anyone to incorporate comedy with what they do, because yeah. it does help. Yeah, It really, really does. It does. I wanted to play a game with you on here. I did, but I, I didn't know if you've been keeping up with any of the... Uh, comedy specials, the stand-up specials, and you're like, no, nah, I, I haven't watched any of those in a while. Um, let's play anyway. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'll win. We'll see. 
I think I'm gonna have prizes up here. I am. That's what I said the last one. I was like, I'm gonna get some prizes because this is fun. <laughs> That's fun. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna name the title okay. of the comedy special. And then if you can, you're gonna tell me whose comedy special it is. Okay. Now I can do okay. multiple choice if you would like. Do you want me to do multiple choice with uh, it? Um I'll ask for multiple choice if I need it. Okay. Okay, okay. sounds good. All right. First title. Wang in there, baby. Wait, what? Wang, wang in there, baby. That is the title of the comedy special. Wang, wang in there. Okay, I need a multiple choice. Multiple choice. Was this Ollie Wang? Ollie or Allie? Allie Wang. Was it Phil Wang or was that some more? Was that Phil Wang? Because I think that's yeah. Ali Wong. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another title. Burn the boats. Burn the boats. Is that Steve Byrne? No. Okay. I'll give you multiple choice. Do multiple choice. Okay. All right. Is that Jeff Dunham? Was that Brian Regan or was that Joe Rogan? Probably Joe Rogan. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I know when somebody right wing. <laughs> I knew it. Okay. I knew it. <laughs> I think you're going to like this one. Title is not normal. Title not is normal. not normal normal okay i'm gonna need a multiple choice okay is that tiffany haddish some more or wanda sykes not normal is it some more no it's not is it tiffany haddish it's one right now <laughs> no i don't know well let's, let's manifest it let's manifest it i don't know i do respect her and love her yeah <laughs> you didn't hear me i said it's not some more it's not no tiffany haddish no, no. <laughs> process elimination oh, you're gonna love this one you're gonna love this one. <laughs> okay. okay we're gonna do one more we're gonna do one more okay would you like a female comedian or a male comedian uh, let's do female. Okay, okay. Female for the win. All right. Mm -hmm. Queen Chandelier. Queen Chandelier. I have an idea. I would like to hear the multiple choice. Multiple choice. Is that Tiffany Haddish, some more, or why am I having a hard, name, hard time with her name? Ollie Wang. Allie? Ollie. Allie. Okay. So uh, Allie Wang, some more, or Tiffany Haddish, Queen Chandelier. Is this some more? We're going to get so together. Yes, I know I would win. We both would. We're going to win. <laughs> Yes. Yay. Um, I am going to come up with some gifts, though, because this was fun. And I thank you for participating. Thank you. <laughs> but see, Girl, see I won glory. You got, I you won go. glory. My and friend Scott no, and I saw me win the glory. <laughs> and, and you get some homework. You're like, I could go check out the new Wanda Sykes. Not normal. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't remember the names. I'm like, you know, Cole. <laughs> the last one I saw. <laughs> I don't know what the names are. See, it's all on the video, so you can always go right back and check it out, which is yeah. a reminder to you guys that if you missed it and you just chimed in, you can always go right back because we'll have it posted on our feet. So there you go.
But yes, I have enjoyed my time with you so, so very much. And today's Friday, so are you going to be going out and doing another, another stand-up tonight? Tonight, no. Tonight, I'm off. I did last night. I'm off tonight. And, um, gosh, I don't know when next. I'm so married to my calendar that I don't know what I'm doing if I'm not looking <laughs> directly at my calendar. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I get it. Well, I enjoy you taking this time today. I have had a blast. I hope we get a chance to do this again. Me too. And I, I encourage anyone, if you have not gotten on her page, follow her page. It's awesome content. You're able to interweave and intertwine uh, your dolls and your sketch comedy. And it's, it's very, very fun. It's such a fun page. So uh, thank you. Because we need all the sunshine we can get. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. If you have any questions, oh, and someone did have a comment before I before we we say bye. Someone had a suggestion. If I can go back into these comments, and they said it was busy Barbie B Z B Z Y Barbie. What about grouping the reels together in a series here on IG? As far as grouping together your um. Your, your sketches with the dolls and you know well also why while putting them on youtube because i think that's a great idea so what about grouping oh, the rules together and the the IG? IG? oh that's probably what those highlight reels are huh yes and then some people do have like a guide because sometimes they'll say refer to my my guide yeah so so there is a, an ig guide as well Thank you, Busy Barbie. That is yeah. such a good, I, I never even thought of that. Thank you. Oh yeah, I wanna make sure I didn't pass up anything else that anyone had said or any questions that's anyone such had. A good idea. So yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what they had said, Busy Barbie. So we do appreciate it. Well, I am not gonna take up any more of your time. I appreciate you so much. Of I thank you. This has been such an honor and I am, I am just over here glowing. I had such a fun time talking to you. I'm so glad. I had so much fun. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. Thank you. We're going to stay in touch, okay? Yes. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>